So we verified a listing is within a half an hour walk from work, doesn't make me take a ferry, and we're able to verify that our pancake house, gelateria, school, or hospital is in the area. But after the search query turns up those results, we want to see more about those places in our potential new neighborhood. Luckily, the Places Library is a ridiculously large database full of useful tidbits about the world around us. Places returned in both our autocomplete and search box have unique identifiers called place IDs. You should be aware that you can pass them just like lat longs in many of the services, such as distance matrix and directions APIs. Place IDs are the keys that get you back tons of details about an establishment or location. When we get the list of results from our search box, we get place IDs for all of them. Let's take a look at a few examples of using the place IDs in the place details web service to see what kind of details are available. We already have a place ID here to test out. We'll be getting the place IDs within our site from our search box or text search query. But for the web service request, we can get place IDs from the places, text, nearby, or radar searches. Check out the link in the instructor notes for how to do that. We need to use the place IDs to search for place details, which is the demonstration that we're about to do. Again, I'm specifying that I'm doing a place detail search here and that I want the response in JSON format. I'm passing in a place ID and my API key. Here's the response that we get back for the Google Sydney office. I'm going to minimize the address components and the geometry. Okay, we can see here that we get back an international phone number, the name for the place, some photos, a rating, not sure where those 0.5 points went, lots of reviews, and the type. So we can tell this is an establishment, which means it's a business. All of these photos have photo reference IDs seen here. We can build another simple URL to use the photo reference IDs using an API key and a photo reference parameter and a width. This time I'm making a places photo request. Again, I specify a width, the photo reference ID that I got back from the place details request, and my API key. That's the places photo that we were given in our place details request. Let's do another place ID as an example. This is a great little coffee shop. You may or may not have heard of it. Okay, we can see that this is the Starbucks on Broadway in the city. Now we can see some pretty useful stuff. Operating hours are really useful for one thing. We'll use these in our site later when we get place details results. Notice that we get back, for display purposes, text, but also granular data of the periods when it's open. Again, we get back the photos. We also again get back the rating and reviews. So for example, if I wanted to limit my results to things open for certain hours or above a certain rating, I could do that. If you're making a restaurant review or search app, these things can be really important to you. Let's get back to our site. So we're already getting back all the place IDs when we do the text search or the search box query. So let's add an on-click event on the markers that appear that'll display some place details about each marker. Remember, we need the places library loaded to do this. We already included it in order to use autocomplete and search box. We're going to add to our create markers for places function. For each place marker that we create, we're going to add an event listener to call a get details function. We're going to create a single info window here that will share between the different place markers so that we only have one set of place details open at once. And then we'll add our event listener for a click event on the marker. This will call a get place details function, passing in the marker, which is this, and the place info window. Let's define that now. Our get place details function is going to use the place ID to execute a place detail search. And then it's going to display a bunch of that information in an info window above the place marker. We'll create a new places service and use the get details method, passing in the place ID, which we set as the marker ID before. We'll get back the results, check that the status is OK, and then parse through all of that neat data that we saw before in the web service call. We'll put all of this data into the info window that we create, including the first photo reference that we get. Remember, not every place ID will return all of the details that we saw in the web service calls. 
Some of them may not have opening hours. Some of them may not have a phone number, etc. So we have to check for the existence of each of these pieces of data before we actually display it in the info window. Let's test this out. OK, let's click on some of these markers to get more results. We can see the place name, the formatted address, the phone number, the operating hours, and a nice little thumbnail. Ooh, a 24-hour IHOP. Jackpot. All right, so I think this is really going to help our users. At this point, they'd be able to find the places of interest in the neighborhoods that they could potentially live in. Let's review our Places API skills in a quiz.